Hello, my name is Dominique Kelly. I'm a senior in the STEM program at Charles River Flowers High School with specialized skills in biology. As I plan to pursue a degree in environmental science, I have decided to tackle an alarming issue in our environment, plastic pollution in the ocean. According to National Geographic, plastic contributes to most of the trash accumulation in the ocean. There are 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic debris in the ocean and 8 million metric tons of plastic trash adds to it annually. The plastic joins the ocean's currents and disperses everywhere, but eventually concentrates in enormous areas called ocean garbage patches. On the contrary, plastic does not degrade into the environment but instead continuously breaks into smaller and smaller pieces, making it difficult to collect. Frequently, marine animals, including the fish we eat, mistaken these plastics for food and ingest them. This has allowed the plastic to enter the food chain and increase the risk of potential illness. Ultimately, plastic is densely congregating and toxifying the ocean. So how do we eliminate plastic pollution in the ocean? Let's take a look at an example. Suppose you run downstairs to the kitchen and the sink is overflowing. What should you do? Should you try to mop the water up? The most effective solution would be to target the source and turn off the water. Therefore, no matter how many trash cleanup projects diligently occur, it will be useless if pollution is continuously dumped. The solution lies in the source of marine plastic pollution. Plastic manufacturing is a major indirect source. Our economic system must shift from a linear take, use, and dispose of to a cynical take, use, and return. Australian national scientist Chris Willicox promotes the concept of deposit incitives from producers to consumers to help reduce littering. In other words, people get paid to recycle. Despite the political challenges for manufacturers, this idea is not impossible. In the United States, California, Maine, Massachusetts, and Connecticut all have container deposit laws. However, this is not enough. According to the Daily Mail, 60% or more plastic pollution comes from developing countries that have poor waste management. With my environmental science degree, I plan to extend plastic deposit incentives to a global scale. The Plastic Bank, an international chain organization that reduces marine plastic pollution and alleviates poverty by promoting plastic as currency in ultra poor regions has already done this. People can collect plastic materials and refer it to the bank. The bank then transfers currency to an individual's account based on weight and quality of the plastic. It is extensive in Haiti, Vancouver, Brazil, and the Philippines. However, the World Atlantis indicates China and Indonesia as the top for plastic waste mismanagement. In collaboration with the Plastic Bank, I can redirect assistance to concentrate on the top polluters. Plastic is artificially structured by chemicals to never decompose into the environment. An environmentally aware alternative recently introduced is biodegradable plastic. Biodegradable plastic is plastic capable of degrading into water, carbon dioxide, or any other biomass. Currently, I'm conducting a research practicum on the legitimacy of various types of biodegradable plastic. The discovery of a reliable and adaptable biodegradable plastic will allow universal use. Plastic pollution henceforth would be self-eliminating because plastic would decompose by natural physical factors. After transition to college, I intend to further study biodegradable plastics for the most efficient, cheap, and accessible design. Overall, my goal is to reduce ocean trash and leave this earth cleaner for the next generation. Thank you.